So I've been getting a lot of questions from people asking, should they go to a chiropractor or is going to a chiropractor good? In this video today, I'm going to give you my thoughts on chiropractors and whether one should go to a chiropractor. Is it worth it? I'm going to give you my perspective as a spine surgery fellow. What's up everyone? This is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Webb, an orthopedic spine surgery fellow. So, chiropractors, should one go to a chiropractor and are chiropractors helpful? So I've been getting this question a lot from different people asking my thoughts as a spine surgery fellow, as a spine surgeon, what are my thoughts on chiropractors? Now, a lot of people go to chiropractors for different reasons. They go for back pain, for neck pain, for headaches, and actually millions of people lose out on work due to these issues. When someone comes to the doctor or to my clinic to see me for back or neck pain, we usually start off with a history and physical. We ask them, what happened to your back or neck? What did you do? What makes the pain better? Where is the pain? Does the pain radiate to your arm or to your leg? Any other associated symptoms such as bowel or bladder incontinence? What have you tried for this particular pain? And then we do a physical exam. We look at their neck, we look at their range of motion, we look at their flexibility, we look at their strength, we look at their sensation. That will tell us whether a patient has an injury to their back or their neck. So my job as a spine surgeon is to evaluate these patients and work them up for any type of musculoskeletal pathologies. This can be in the hip, this could be in the knee, but more specifically, I focus on the spine. After the history and physical as well as the physical examination are complete, then the provider can either order imaging such as an x-ray or CT scan or MRI and then write prescriptions or refer patients to manage that patient's condition. And this treatment can consist of pain medications, consist of injections, as well as referrals to other providers such as massage therapists, acupuncturists, to physical therapists or occupational therapists or chiropractors. So personally, I think it's okay to go to a chiropractor but before you go to any other physician or provider, I think it's important to have a diagnosis. There are lots of different causes of back pain, but the five most common causes of back pain are usually musculogenic, which means the muscles around the back, kind of the paraspinal muscles, which can cause some pain, facetogenic, which is the facets, their bones that connect to each other, and the posterior portion of your back and neck, this can be a cause of pain. It can be sacrogenic, which means the pain comes from your SI joint. It's where your sacrum as well as your ilium come together to form your SI joint. It can be discogenic, which means the pain is actually coming from the disc or the cushion that is between the bones. Or psychogenic, which means the pain is coming from supratentorial or some other psychological problems that are causing the patient to have pain. When you go to a chiropractor, they usually form some type of manipulation or adjustment, which means they're using your body and adjusting different portions of your body to help with the pain and discomfort. And there are a lot of people asking, is popping my knuckles or is popping your neck or popping your back bad? So personally, I don't think it's bad to do this. In each of your joints in your body, you have what's called a capsule that surrounds those particular bones. And when two bones are connected to each other, there's a capsule that surrounds that. And inside this capsule, there's lots of air as well as nitrogen that is released when you crack your knuckles or crack your back. So when you go to a provider that specializes in different adjustments of your back or your neck, the popping that you hear is usually the nitrogen that is released from these particular joints. And when there is some type of constriction or decreased mobility of that particular joint, when you stretch it and release this nitrogen, this usually feels good for a lot of people because you're releasing that pressure. But you have to be aware that there are some risks associated with getting your back or your neck adjusted. There have been several case reports as well as several studies that have come out. There are lots of different complications that can occur when you adjust a particular portion of your spine. 
So specifically in your neck here, this is the front portion of your neck. You have the bones, the cervical bones, you have seven of them. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, and C7. And the nerves that come out of this area here is called your foramen. Right in front of those nerves is the artery here. That's the vertebral artery. And when you adjust your spine, you're essentially releasing the nitrogen that is within the joints back here called the facet joints. But very close to that particular joint is the vertebral artery. So if you're adjusting your neck here, which makes me a little concerned that the artery right here can have an injury to it. And there have been several case reports of vertebral artery dissection from chiropractic adjustments. So personally, it makes me a little nervous to see the adjustments of the cervical spine as well as even the lumbar spine or lower back. But my job as a surgeon is to operate and to make patients feel better with surgery. But I also think that taking a conservative approach to patients is essential. Exhausting all non-operative measures before going to surgery. This means that if a patient comes to me with a spinal condition, we want to make sure that all non-operative measures have been tried and you've exhausted everything before we head to surgery. And if this consists of pain medications, physical therapy, acupuncture, as well as chiropractic manipulation, I think it's okay to at least try it, to say that you've tried everything, and then if this fails, and then we talk about surgery. So let's head over to the other screen to check out some of these chiropractic adjustments. This, this, this chin relaxed. So big pop that you hear here, that's actually the nitrogen has been released from your joints. She's adjusting her lower spine. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. And I can see why some patients feel better because it's a buildup of different pressures and different gases within the joints. And once that pressure is released, it actually feels good. That was a good one. Let's, let's, let's. A lot of people will tell you that the feeling that you get, the relief that you get, is temporary. Oh, solid, bro. Ooh, that one. Oh, wow. Looks like it feels good. I've actually never tried it before, but. Oh. <laughs> wow. The neck ones make me really cringe because a lot of important structures in the neck right here that we talked about earlier. And, um, man. Oh, so personally, I think chiropractic manipulation or adjustments, I think they're fine. I think if you have a particular spinal condition, you want to make sure that you exhaust all non-operative measures prior to going to surgery. So you want to make sure that you've tried pain medications, you've tried home stretching, you've tried corticosteroid injections, plus or minus acupuncture or chiropractic therapy. And if all of this fails and only as a last resort, then is surgery considered. I think it's okay to consider chiropractic therapy with the understanding that Number one, the results are temporary, and most chiropractors will tell you to come back over and over and over and over again, because each time that you go to the chiropractor, you have to pay a particular certain amount of money. And if you go to your chiropractor for 30 or 40 or 50 times, that's a lot of money that the chiropractor may make. I think it's essential to, when you go to the chiropractor, to learn the different exercises that they're teaching you so you can do these exercises on your own at home. And number two is, is that if you're okay with paying each time that you go, you have to understand the risk. The risks are pretty rare, but there are some case reports some studies out there that state that there are inherent risks associated with chiropractic manipulation as well as adjustment. So you have to understand those risks. So those are my thoughts about chiropractors and whether one should go to your chiropractor. Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts? Have you had some good or bad experiences with chiropractors? I would love to hear from you. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.